Good morning, Prime Time Squad, or good afternoon, depending on what side of the country you on. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day, a wonderful Friday, a wonderful start to your weekend. And as cold as it is here today, I hope if you're dealing with the same situation that you are safe, warm, and dry. I'm coming to you this morning or afternoon because... Um, what they have going around now on social media in honor of Black History Month for us beautiful black women is the black girl tag. So I'm going to post my video and I want you to post your video. I want to see those videos. I want to see them on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, <laughs> whatever social media platform um, you use and make sure you hashtag black girls tag and also all of the questions that you have to answer i'm going to put in this video description so all you have to do is every time you do your um black girls tag all you have to do is copy the questions and put them in the video description of your video so the ladies who see your video they can copy those questions and put them in your video their video and so forth and so forth so anywho let me get started on this black girls tag um let's see first question what is my ethnicity my ethnicity is black. Black, black. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people say African American, and I'll go with that too. I don't walk around calling myself African American. Um, I just I'm black. I, I'm 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 a light brown black woman, black beautiful sister. Um, second question which was actually kind of a follow-up of the first question. Do you call yourself black or African-American? And I already answered that. I call myself black, beautiful, black, and proud. <laughs> um, number three, if you have to choose from one of the following, collard green, cornbread, yams, and baked macaroni and cheese, which one would it be? Hmm... <laughs> I love me some good old collard greens with cornbread. Why does it say collard greens or cornbread? But if I really had to choose, I'm going to say collard greens. I love me some good old baked macaroni and cheese, especially if they make it right and you have to make it right. If you cannot make your baked macaroni and cheese right, get out of the oven and let somebody else handle the job. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, do you eat soul food? Well, obviously I do. If I like collard greens and cornbread and I love me some candy yams, some people get them yams and they out the can. Now, if you doctor them out real, doctor them up real good, you know, they I can work with them, but I do prefer them homemade. But, you know, I can work with them. But, yes, I love me some soul food. Number five, do you ever hear the phrase, is that your real hair? And if so, when? Uh, not lately, because I like to wear a lot of hair pieces, a lot of, I like to wear wigs. I love my wigs, especially in the wintertime. Oh my God, I love my hats. I love my head hats. But, um, when I do uh, wear my natural hair, I've heard that before, a long time ago. I mean, I haven't heard that recently, so I guess that's a no. But anywho, um, next question. What is your hair type? Example, 1B through 4C. I could not tell you what kind of hair type I have because I never investigated or researched hair types. Don't judge me, sisters. Don't judge me. <laughs> Number seven. What is your favorite edge control? Um, I'm an old school chick. I still use jam. I, I, I use regular hold. I use extra hold. Every single time I wash my hair, Every single time I wash my hair, after I put my little sheen all on it and, you know, my hair oil sprays, then I slap that jam all up and down my scalp, all around the edges. Get them edges. Edges come through. Be slick and shiny. <laughs> so, yeah, I still use jam. 
But anyway, um, let's see. What's the next question? Number eight, were you always confident in wearing your natural hair? And yes, I guess I supposed to, suppose so. But I like wearing um, natural, only like, okay, I'm one of those people who, okay, I prefer a perm. I ain't gonna lie. I love that creamy crack. But there's times where I have went natural, I let my hair grow the perm out and whatnot. And it's just, I am not one of those ladies who loves to spend so much time on their natural hair. I love natural hair, but it looks better on others than on me. <laughs> because I haven't actually taken the time or invested in a whole bunch of products to just bring all the natural out of me. So I haven't went all the way with it. So, you know, I go so far and then I that creamy crack and be calling me. It be calling me. It be calling me. So, you know. <laughs> you know. But anyway, number nine. Um, number nine doesn't apply to me. Did you have support from anyone while you were transitioning? That don't apply to me as far as, you know, natural hair. Um, number ten. Do you typically have a good or bad time at the hairdresser and why? Um I say good and bad because I love being around a group of, you know, ladies, black beautiful ladies, um, talking and chopping it up and, you know, having girl talk and all that. What I don't like is being in one of those shops where you gotta sit there for twenty three and a half hours of the day because they done either overbooked or somebody that came late, so the hairdresser gets behind, and it's like, you there forever. You, I hate, I hate, I, I prefer going to somebody's home to get my hair done, where I'm just there by myself, and maybe one other client is waiting. I prefer that than to go to a busy shop, you know, but I still support my own. I still support my own. <laughs> um, number... 10. No, number 11. What's the highest and lowest amount you pay for braids or weave? And I'm going to say the highest amount I probably paid for braids was probably $175. And I gave the lady like a $20 tip or maybe it was $25. I think I just gave her two bills. I think that's what I did. I gave her, you know, a $25 tip. But that's the highest. I mean, I know people pay outrageous amounts for weave especially that real real good good you know natural hair weave uh or real hair weave i should say not natural hair but real you know what i mean but i never paid like over two or three four hundred dollars for some weave or nothing like that nope won't do it won't do it um <laughs> but number 12 what would you prefer box braids or twist and I am a box braid kind of chick. Although, although, it takes a long time to take them bad boys out. I hate that part. That part. I hate that part. Um, The last lady that I went to to get box braids, and it's been a minute, but she's so good and fast, this African named Queen. Um, She's so good and fast. I mean, she just... I mean, she had me in and out of there, I swear, in like maybe four and a half hours. And my hair looked beautiful, beautiful. And the braids lasted about three months, you know, almost three months. Well, I could have went longer, but, you know, I, I can't be doing some people out there with four, five, six, seven, eight months, nine braids and having all them naps and stuff all in their hair and hair start smelling and ugh. No, I can't do it. <laughs> No shade. I can't do it. Um, but yeah, I love her. Queen, I'm gonna have to see her again soon. Um, next time I go on vacation. Um, number 13. How deep is it for you to let someone see you in your headscarf? And I'm gonna take that as a question that might mean like, you know, a guy seeing you in your headscarf. And I have no problem with it at all. At all. At all. Because one thing for sure, two things for certain. If I get my hair laid to the gods, you know, laid and slayed, 
and it's time to go to bed. And I don't want to wake up looking like, you know, hair all over my head. And, you know, I'm wrapping that stuff up. If, if he don't want to see it wrapped up, he would have to pay to get it redone. And actually, that won't even happen because as long as it takes to get your hair done, nope. I, I'm wrapping it up. I'm at least put a little scarf around the edges or, you know, and try to sleep. You know how you sleep real cute? You sleep real cute and on the side or on the edge of the bed, you know, if you just got your hair done or on your, you know, hand on your chin. <laughs> All that. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> but um, number 14, how many combs or brushes have you broken? If I were to ask my sons, because they always complain, Mom, where's all the cones? Where the cones go? I mean, I don't know how many cones I've broken. A lot. A lot. Too many to count. Too many to count. Um, Have you ever been, number 15, have you ever been forced to stay up looking for your bonnet before bed? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> like flipping the covers, the mattress, looking the curtain on next to the, the window, you know, curtain next to the bed, looking behind the curtain, all crawling under the bed. Yes, yes. I, I, yeah, I have been forced to stay up sometimes looking for my head wrap. <laughs> and I don't use a bonnet. I use a scarf or I use a do-rag, you know, depending on what kind of hairstyle I have. Or if I just washed my hair, you know, and slicked it up with my jam and everything, I use a do-rag, tie that butt real tight, pull the back, stretch it, stretch it out. Ooh, yes. Hair wake up. You wake up your hair just so smooth and shiny and okay anyway anyway <laughs> um number 16 name four hood black movies you love to watch that's easy that's easy first of all first of all i'm telling you i can watch friday the first one i can watch friday the first one every day all day I remember when we first got that movie back in the day after it came out at the movies and we got the VHS tape. I don't think all of y'all know what those are, but the VHS tape, they, they kind of square. They, you know, they got like a big old black tape in there. You pull it all out, and, you know, and if you play it too much, that tape will get all intertwined and snap and break and everything. That was our tape <laughs> after like a few weeks. And we have to buy a new one. Um, so that one, also Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood. I love me some dope boy. And um, New Jack City. And, gosh, I have to say Menace to Society. I love those movies. Those are like my top, top hood movies. I love those movies. But anyway... Minister Society, I really wish they would come out with a part two. But I know that's not going to happen. But it would be nice. It would be nice. But anyway, um, those are my uh, four top um, hood movies. Uh, let's see. Number 17. How do you feel about interracial couples? Um, I really don't feel one way or the other. Like, I'm not that kind of person that be out there... Oh, my God, look at him with that white girl. Oh, my God, look at her with that white man. You know, I'm I'm not that, hey, if you happy, you happy. I don't care if he's green, purple, Asian, Jamaican, I mean, African, white, Puerto Rican, Spanish. I don't care. As long as they treat you right, as long as they treat you right, and they love you for who you are, that's all that matters. Um... Number 18, is there anything about your features that are considered more masculine because of your complexion? Hold up. Let me look in this. Let me, let me see. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, Number, let's see, 19. Are you light skin, brown skin, or dark skin? I like to consider myself uh, brown skin. Um, I have a brother, and he's really light. He's like really light. And in the summer, he looks so light, he can be mixed. But I like to call myself brown skin because I'm not really, really light. I'm not dark. 
I'm kind of like in the middle area. So I'm going to just say I'm brown. I'm brown. Caramel mocha. <laughs> um, number 20. Did you go to a predominantly white or black school? Uh, let's see here. Because of the fact that we moved a lot, a lot um, as a child, most of the schools I went to were predominantly black. Um, then for junior high, I went to like a Christian school. It was kind of mixed. Mexicans, a few Asians, um, a lot of, a lot of Caucasians and, you know, a few blacks. Um, and then high school was, oh my God, was a melting pot, a melting pot. It was every, every race, nationality ethnicity you can imagine was in my high school so that answers that um number 21 would you or have you ever dated a white guy and i have not will i if he is sexy and fine as hell and not too far from the hood i will don't judge me don't judge me I don't think I can date a white guy who knows absolutely nothing about my culture. I mean, absolutely nothing. Like, uh, if I throw out a few ebonic terms and he's looking at me like, oh, uh, dear, uh, and what is, what is that, dear? What what are you talking about? Like, what? No, no, no. <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge me, but I will. I will. I'm not going to say I won't. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, say I won't date a white guy. I will not say that. Um, let's see. Number 22. Do people ever say you at ghetto? say Tanya you so ghetto or you so something like that and maybe a long time in my in my younger days I ain't gonna lie I ain't gonna lie I think me and all my friends was ghetto we was just <laughs> now I would prefer hood like I can go from corporate to hood in less than 2.5 seconds if you take me there I can like I really can I really can <laughs> but um yeah so no i don't think no not ghetto not ghetto um number 23 do you ever get told that you sound like a white girl um like marianne no i don't unless you're referring to like if i'm okay like my answering machine voice my corporate voice I've heard people say I sound like a white girl, but on a normal basis, no, I just sound like a normal girl. But yeah, I can like on my answer machine, like, I'm sorry, you have reached Tanya and she's not home right now, but if you please leave your name, phone number, and a brief message, I shall return your call. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> number 24, what black celebrity do you look like? Um, I don't know. I don't think there's any black celebrities that I look like or that look like me. I don't know. If if y'all know of any, let me know. <laughs> let me know. Um, number, uh, where we at? Number 25. Which real housewife of Atlanta do you connect with the most? Wow. I'm going to say Nene, not the mean Nene when she gets mean Nene, but the Nene who, it seems like she's always like, Nene stands in her shit, if you know what I mean. She's, she's always the same. She's not fake. She don't sugarcoat stuff. She says what she says and she says it with her chest. That's why I say Nene. Um, 
Do you have a foundation? Okay, do number twenty six. Do you have your foundation? Do they have your foundation shade at your local drugstore? I use Mary Kay. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know how many drugstore foundations I've tried over the years, and they all went into the trash. Even when I try to match them at the store with my skin complexion, no. Nope. Number 27, do you know how to twerk? Let me see. I can... I think everybody can twerk. I really do think, you know, all you got to do is put your back into it, put your back into it, and do it, and do it, and do it. No. <laughs> but for real, I think everybody can twerk. It's all about how well you can twerk, <laughs> or how fast, or how slow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think I can twerk a little bit, a little bit. Um, Number 28, when do you feel your blackest? Around family, friends, or white people? I'm going to have to say around family and friends because most of my family and friends is black. So I'm going to have to say family and friends. Uh, do you drink Starbucks? 29. I do drink Starbucks, but not on a regular basis because I'm not into spending like an arm and a leg on coffee every day like some people. No, not Tanya. No, not. I will make me some coffee at home and put it in a, and go on about my business. <laughs> but yeah, Starbucks every now and then is cool. Uh, number 30. Do you roll your neck or eyes commonly? At this age, no. I can't remember the last time I rolled my neck. Unless I was just being funny. Like, you know, just playing around. You know, what did you say? You said what? Because I, I, girl, I can get your neck roll together. I sure can. <laughs> but no, <laughs> not normally. I don't roll my neck. My eyes, I'll give you a side eye before I give you, you know, before I roll my eyes. I give you a side eye like, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, Number 31. Have you ever had to deal with, 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 can't talk, hold up. Number 31, have you ever had to deal with racism? And I'm going to have to say, yes. There's one incident back in the day where, I won't, I won't talk about that incident. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk about another incident. And that was just basically when I was, um, working, you know, at telemarketing and things like that. And somebody would call you and they would say, oh my God, I don't know, at least once a week when I used to work telemarketing when I was younger, you're a black, me, you know, er, you know, you're black, B, I, I mean, they, it, it was a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. I remember one time my cousin he had uh, got hired at the same telemarketing where I was working at. Now, me, you know, I, I can I can take that. You know, on the phone, on the phone, I'm at work. I can take that. I can easily hang up on you after you don't correct your uh, grammar uh, or your language or whatever. But my cousin, oh, no. The first time somebody called him a black uh, N-word, he must, uh, flip the script. I mean, he went off, he cussed him smooth the hell out, and got fired. <laughs> he got fired, he wasn't even there a few weeks. He got fired, like, fired. <laughs> like, let me walk your black butt out the door. <laughs> but yeah, he got fired on the spot. <laughs> But anyway, uh, number 32, the last question. What African-American woman do you look up to? What African-American woman do I look up to? Uh, it's so many. Gosh. It's so many. Um, there's quite a few. Let me see. Uh, Taraji, Oprah. Felicia Rashad, um, 
um, what's her name? Uh, oh my God, oh my God, I can't remember her name right now. Maya Angelou. Uh, it's so many. It's it's so many. Um, for different reasons. Um, some of them the way they carry themselves, always like a lady, always, you know. It's just what they display, how they come across the people. Just some of them for their intelligence, some of them for their drive, hard work, determination, their character. Um, it's so many different reasons. So many different reasons. Um, but those are those are just a few. Just a few. I could go on and on and on if I lifted every you know African American woman that I look up to. But um, let me see. What I am wearing, uh, oh, that, that's just the end of, okay, that was the end, that was the end. So the last question was, what African-American woman do you look up to? And I gave you that answer. So that is the end of my black girl tag. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope you guys got a little motivation from that so that you can do your own black girl tag. And remember, I will post all of the questions in my video description so that you guys can copy and paste and put it in your videos and so forth and so forth and so forth and make sure make sure you put in your video black girl tag in honor of black history month we black girls rock not just during black history month but all year long <laughs> But I enjoyed speaking to you guys today, and I enjoyed doing my black girl tag, and I hope you do yours as too. I want to see them going across social media, so get get on it, get on it. And in the meantime, and in between time, prime time squad, make sure you <clears throat> make sure you like this video, <laughs> make sure you share this video. Please share this video. We need to make sure every black woman out there does her black girl tag. So let's make these go viral. So share, 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 and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tanya's Live Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And in the meantime and in between times, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out.